Hey everybody, welcome to Tri Tips Live. This is Coach John. I'm coming to you from my home in Florida. And I gotta tell you, it has been an eventful two or three weeks since I've been on board last time on my live show where we did the uh, Kona Live. Uh, today we're uh, gonna cover uh, feet swim anxiety. That's what we're gonna cover today on a, in, in our uh, All Things 70.3 live cast. I wanna thank our sponsor, of course, uh, Longevity Wellness. Their online store, their online supplement store is in the process of being made. It should be up and running by the end of November. That is going to be a great place to pick up all kinds of different supplements to help you in your uh, in your athletic uh, growth, in your recovery, and in your all overall health. Uh, I love uh, Coach Cynthia. I mean, sorry, uh, Dr. Cynthia. She does a great job uh, keeping this old body in shape. Um, Hurricane Ian update. So you guys know that I've been trying to do these lives uh, every Saturday or every Sunday, every Sunday night at 7, 7 p.m. And I've missed the last two weeks. Well, we had Hurricane Ian come through. We had uh, winds here, uh, gusts up to 100 miles an hour. We had sustained winds at 60. Uh, damage as far as my home went we had a 50 year old shed in the backyard and just basically explode. It just blew the roof and the sides off of it. Uh, it was ready to go anyway. So that, that shed is now gone, but uh, that was the only real damage other than we didn't ever lose electricity, but we lost our internet and our, my cable and, and was not able to do the show for uh, a couple of weeks because literally till this past Monday, we did not have uh, internet. So that's why I haven't been around for the last couple of weeks. I want to thank you guys for being here. If you're on board with this, throw me a hi, how you doing right there in the comments so I can take a look and see who's on board. We got a few people on. I want to thank everybody who's come on board to uh, to watch this show. Um, now, I'm not in 100% uh I'm not 100% uh, health-wise today. I've been fighting a upper respiratory infection. Um, you might have saw one of my shorts where I talked about when you should and when you shouldn't. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I may cough. <coughs> when you should and when you shouldn't work out. Um, when you're when you're sick, we may do that on a different uh, on a different live. But that's not for today. On the world champs, on our world champs uh, contest, we had no winners. But uh, I do have to say I did pretty good on the on the men's side. Congratulations to Gustav Eden put on a show. He absolutely blew away the Kona run record and the Kona overall record. Uh, ran by uh, Sam Laidlow late in the race only because he held back until that point. And then he poured it on and was able to win that with a with a 740. My gosh, I can remember about maybe five, eight years ago when we were saying, when it, it can you break eight hours? And they're not just breaking it, they're crushing it now. The top 10 broke 10 hours or broke uh, broke eight hours. So the top four broke the record. Now I got first and third in the men's. On the women's side, Chelsea Sedano of the United States, go USA. She took the win. I didn't even have her on my radar. I don't know of anybody. The only person who mentioned her at all prior to the race was uh, Rini, uh, yeah, Miranda Cafre, Rini. She was like, watch this girl, watch this girl, watch this girl. And everybody was like, poop, ha, ha, you, whatever. Yeah, but she actually put on a, another person who put on a quite the show, uh, came off the bike down about seven minutes and didn't take long before she reeled in, uh, she reeled in Lucy Charles Barkley and then held a six-minute lead throughout the whole rest of the race. Lucy Charles holding second, got her right. Uh, um, Annie Haug came in third. I had her rated at fourth. Uh, uh, Laura Phillips in, in third. Now she uh, got a five-minute penalty and she was out. So that's my coverage of the World Championships. Congratulations to them. And uh, so <coughs> with all that... <coughs> Mm, excuse me, excuse me. Let me take a drink here. <clears throat> I haven't talked this much in a week. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get going on our show. So, have you ever been on the swim 
and had a panic attack, in the water is the worst place you could possibly have a panic attack. I'm going to bring you today some really great information on how to avoid having issues on the swim. We're going to cover beating swim anxiety. Um, what is swim anxiety anyway? Uh, things that bring on a swim anxiety. Uh, deep water. Uh, a lot of people do most of their swimming in a pool. And when they get out into the open water situations, they are now in water where they can't see the bottom. That is as just to some people that that mysteriousness of what's below you causes anxiety. Another one is dark water. There's times, and I've done this several times in the state of Florida, where I put my arm in the water and I can't even see my hand out in front of me because the water is so cloudy. I also, it was that way uh, at Ironman Louisville, um, the water was mud colored and we basically were swimming in super, super thin mud, couldn't see your hand. <clears throat> Another is rough water. Rough water swimming is something you don't experience when you swim in a pool. You only really experience it when you're outside in the open water. Um, other swimmers in the water, that always causes anxiety, the possibility of being punched or hit or kicked or having your goggles locked, knocked loose. Um, that's always a possibility when you're in open water swimming. And we'll talk about some ways later on about how to avoid that situation, how to stay away from all the other swimmers. And time cutoffs. Time cutoffs are always an anxiety problem. And we're going to cover that right off the, uh, pretty quick uh, at the beginning. We're going to talk about how to make sure that you can hit your time cutoffs. Um, like I say, just go ahead. If you're if you're here on board, just throw, throw a comment. Say, hey, J hey, Coach John, how's it going? I'd like to acknowledge the fact that you're here. We got quite a few people on board, and uh, it'd, be, it'd be really great to know who's here. Um, then the last thing, the one that causes a lot of anxiety, and I'm going to cover that right off the bat, is sea critters. Uh, what are sea critters? Well, sea critters go everywhere from... Uh, from stingrays to uh, sea urchins to uh, alligators to snakes to sharks. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of those are anxieties that are of the mind. They're not of the body. Um, when it comes to a few of them, first off, sea urchins and stingrays, by the time we get in the water, on uh, uh, most of us, we're not the lead swimmers going into the water. Those guys are all cleared out. They're gone. They're out of, they're out of there. The other thing is, too, uh, is with the bigger sea. Oh, and I forgot the other one. I forgot one. Jellyfish. Jellyfish. Jellyfish is really the biggest issue that we may have as, as swimmers. Um, they're not debilitating, but their sting is really, really nasty. Uh, but the two biggies. Being from Florida, and I know this happens in Georgia, could happen in uh, in in Australia. I'm not sure mu much about the uh, about the, the Australian crocodiles if they if they have this issue or not. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something about the sea critters. First off, sharks. Sharks are not out to eat you. You know the whole thing is oh sharks. I mean, you look like a you look like a seal in your wetsuit. If you look at how how many swimmers actually enter the water on the coasts of the United States every single day with zero shark attacks on most days. You're going to have, uh, I believe the, the stats that I saw where it is the state of Florida had the most shark attacks in 2020. Uh, we had 74 with zero fatalities. Second was Hawaii with 19 with one fatality, California had like seven or eight, and Texas coast had like four or five, and then there's a spattering here or there. Shark attacks are not something to really get anxious about. Yes, I understand there is the anxiety. It is brought on by that, that horribly false movie Jaws back in the 70s, and it's been just escalated and escalated and escalated with Shark Week and all that stuff about uh, people being bit by sharks. We don't see that often in... I don't, I don't actually, I don't remember seeing it ever in a, in a triathlon. I did see where was a seal bit uh, a swimmer last month, but not a, a shark. <clears throat> as far as gators go, gators clear out. They're, they're ambush hunters. 
Uh, they hunt at the edge of the water, a murky edge of water. They clear out when there's when there's a lot of swimmers around, and most of the time in a lake where there might be a gator, they put uh, they put a uh, jet ski or something back and forth. Keep the keep those animals away from the swimmers. Uh, I don't put much uh, anxiety, much problems at all with the sea critters that way. The two that I do worry about, and there's nothing we could really do about it, is uh, you see like an Ironman Ironman Maryland. You could see it in Ironman Florida. You have the possibility of the um of the jellyfish uh they will sting you uh some types do sting you some types don't uh, and if you do get stung most of the time you're going to get uh, some welting it's going to sting it's going to it shouldn't stop you from your race um the other one is snakes again they clear out when there's a lot of people around they don't want to be around people uh water moccasins in particular are kind of nasty mean buggers but uh, they, they, again, they clear out when there's a lot of people around. So with that said, let's, work, let's uh, go forward and talk about uh, the, the actual anxiety of the swimming. Um, there are some steps we're going to take to acclimate ourselves to, uh, to acclimate ourselves to the, to the open water. And what we're going to do is we are going to, if you're, let's just say that you're going to a race and you're going to go to an open water swim and you've never been in that swim before. What we're going to try to do is we want to make sure we can get there early enough. If it's an ocean swim, you can get there early enough and get to a beach a uh, day or two ahead of time. Or even if there's a practice swim, you can get in there and you can take these steps that we're going to talk about to acclimate yourself to open water swimming. You can also do this at your local open water swimming uh, practice. And the best way to acclimate to open water swimming is to open water swim in your training. So, but what we're going to do is when we get to our, our location, we are going to get in the water and we're going to acclimate to the, the conditions we're in. We're going to gradually wade out into the water. We're going to let uh, the water come up to about our waist level. And we're going to then take and lay back on our back and we're going to just put our arms out and we're going to float. We're going to tighten our core. We're going to bring our legs up. We're going to float. Just lay there and float and relax in the water. Let the, let the waves move you a little bit. Just close your eyes if you have to and enjoy the fact that you're laying there buoyant in the water. It's really a lot. Of, it's really easy with a wetsuit and uh, in salt water. That, that buoyancy just shows you how much you're going to float in the water versus uh, you thinking you're going to sink. Take your time. There's no rush on this. You have to acclimate at your pace, not someone else's. And what's up, Angel? How's it going, buddy? Angel says, hi. Uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to, Angel is a, as an athlete of mine on the east coast of Florida. He'll probably tell you also about uh, the fact that, hey, there's sharks, but big deal. Um, <coughs> uh, take your time, play in the surf, you know, take and, and do some, do some, uh, body surfing if you, if you have to, and, and get rolled in the surf once in a while, you feel, feel the, the, feel how the water moves you. Okay. Um, but just play, just get out there and just play in the water and get acclimated to the surf, to the swells, to the to the waves if you're in a freshwater lake, um, get used to the buoyancy. Now, once you're used to that, we're gonna take it and we're gonna walk in a little bit farther. We're gonna walk into about shoulder depth, uh, just under your shoulder depth right here. And you're gonna walk around. You're gonna take steps, you're gonna walk around the bottom. Uh, if you are in salt water, you're gonna do what we call the stingray shuffle. You're not gonna pick your feet up and put them down. You're gonna slide your feet across the bottom, just pushing whatever ahead of you uh, that'll, that'll get rid of any, any, uh, of those kind of sea critters. They're going to take off. They're not going to bother you. They feel you coming before your foot actually gets to them. They'll take off and go away. <coughs> then when you walk around for a while, uh, and you are now getting used to being in a little bit deeper water, let's take your, put your face down in the water with your goggles on and just look around and see how it is. If you got a snorkel, this really works great with a snorkel, put the snorkel on, walk, just keep walking around, looking around at the bottom, see where your feet are, see what's on the bottom. Just 
get used to that uh, that depth, that pressure on your chest of the water pushing against you. And uh, once you've done that, you, uh, you want to take and uh, maybe float face forward on the water with the snorkel. This works really great with the snorkel. Float, float face forward. Do the exact same thing you did in the shallow water face up, but do it face down in the deeper water. Just get used to that floating feeling. Don't swim. You're just going to sit there and you're going to let your body acclimate to that, um, to the water in the depth. Once you're done with that, you're going to bob up and down, go underwater, blow bubbles, uh, just play around in the deeper water and get yourself used to being in the deeper water. Now, another way you can uh, help yourself to get acclimated to open water swimming is, is to train with a group. We have several really good groups in my area. We've got one that, that swims every Sunday morning about three or four miles from my house. We got another one that swims every day from, the, from a lifeguard stand at Siesta Key Beach, the number one beach in America for years upon years upon years. Uh, go find an organized open water swimming group. Um, do a little research on the internet. You could probably find some of the, something in your area on that and, uh, or just bring friends, bring a friend to walk along the beach with you. Uh, never swim ever, ever, ever swim open water swimming alone. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do is if you're still not really sure what you want to do and, and you can actually swim in the shallower water. Now, in the ocean, this could be an issue because you might be inside the, the surf break uh, and you could get tossed around a little bit, but you could find a place where you can swim, where you can actually stand up and put your feet on the bottom. Uh, yeah, yucky bottoms, but that's okay. Uh, but go ahead and do that and you will be able to uh, be feel a little bit more comfortable if you stay in water that you can stand up and gradually you'll be able to work farther and farther out as you build confidence. Now, another way, um, another way that you can uh, acclimate to the open water is to not think about it. And what do I mean by that? How can you not think about it? Swim hard, put hard intervals into your swim, push, push yourself uh, to swim fast for, for a certain length of time, go in, stand on the shore, get back out, swim another two minutes as hard as you can, three minutes as hard as you can. <coughs> and that will, uh, <coughs> that will occupy your mind, take your eye, your thought pattern off of the fact that you're swimming in open water and onto the fact that you're pushing really hard, getting your heart rate up and getting, um, getting going. Now, a couple of things you're going to want to have when you're doing open water swimming and and these will help with the anxiety of open water swimming. Also, one of them is a bright yellow, orange, uh, something really bright as a, as a swim cap. Uh, this way you will be able to be spotted off the shore. And, and the other thing you want to have that right here is a swim buoy. This one's a play try. It's a blue 70, but a lot of different companies have this exact same swim buoy. Um, you blow it up. And you hook it to yourself right here with this clip and you tow it behind you. Uh, you won't even feel it. It'll be somewhere between your waist and your knees and you won't, you won't even touch it it'll, and it'll float behind you. And if you get in a situation where you're, where you're panicking or you just need to stop and you are in water deeper than, uh, than you can touch, you can grab onto this. You can float on it. You'll be just fine. Uh, I know that we have, uh, had one of these come off and uh, like rainbow river and our, our rainbow river swim and had somebody have one come off and it floated down the river almost as fast as they swam down the river. So this is a must uh, links are going to be in the description below for anything that, uh, that I point out to you and in, in these uh, live streams. So go ahead and pick yourself up a, a swim buoy. If you're going to do open water swimming for sure. The other thing you might want to have is a wetsuit. Uh, Many places around the world, uh, we never the, you never get out of wetsuit weather. Uh, but here in Florida, we're just starting to head into wetsuit season, where we go for about four months or five months. If you want to swim in open water, you'll be using a wetsuit. Uh, our our races are getting close to wetsuit legal. I'm doing one next weekend. Uh, this has been I've done it. 
five times. It's been wetsuit legal three and not wetsuit legal two. Uh, Iron Man Florida 70.3, which is what we're focusing on this, this whole series two, is going to be wetsuit uh, legal. It's going to be in December. Uh, uh, not challenge, but um, Clash Daytona going to be wetsuit legal. All of the races probably from mid-October on and down here in Florida. We have ra- we actually have races in January. We have races in February. We don't have an off-season in the state of Florida. We just have a, a wetsuit season and not wetsuit season. So pick yourself up a wetsuit. This is a Sumer Po. This wetsuit here, I'll have a link in the description after the, after the, uh, the stream is over. But this wetsuit right here is made totally, completely bio. Uh, this is There's no uh, oil-based uh, substance in these at all. They're a really great company. I absolutely love this wetsuit. I've never swam in anything quite as nice as this one before. So uh, pick yourself up a wetsuit. Pick yourself up a swim buoy. Make sure you got yourself a nice bright cap, good pair of goggles, and you should be ready to um, get out there and hit the water for your open water swims. Now, we're going to talk about uh, hydration. Oh, we got to hydrate. We're going to talk about swim technique. One of the things that can help you with your swim anxiety and your, and the cutoff times is being able to actually have a good swim stroke. Swimming isn't about how strong you are. It's not about how fast you can kick. It's not about how fast you can make your arms go. It's about how much water can you pull, can you hold yourself and pull your body forward in. Uh, and how we're going to do that is, get air, get air, get air. how we're going to do that is, uh, is we have to have proper swim technique. And what I mean by t- t- proper proper swim technique, I'm going to go over my uh, swim technique. I'm going to do this in about three or four minutes, five minutes, take notes, screen record, whatever you need to do to see what we got going on. First, we want to make sure that we reach all the way forward on our our front reach. And and what I mean by that is we're going to reach forward. If you put your arm up, this is an exercise. Everybody get ready. Here we go. You're going to put your arm up forward. And you're going to extend and you're going to push your arm, push your arm up forward like I'm doing right here. And if you see, you're going to feel your scapula pull forward on your back. This is the big bone right here on your shoulder. You're going to feel it pull forward. And that's going to engage your lats and your pecs. And what that does is it engages two large muscles to pull your arm back through the water. And if you don't engage the pecs, your bicep, a very small muscle, will be the only muscle pulling your arm through the water. This is why even with good swim technique, good swim arm position, some people don't go fast is because they don't engage the pecs and the lats. And the only way to do that is when you get your arm all the way forward, you're going to push it all the way forward and out before your fingertips hit the water. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is how to get your arm out there when you're coming through through your your uh, catch. I mean, so, uh, your recovery. You're going to bring your arm forward, and you're not going to the old school. The old school was to put your hand in the water right in front of your head and glide it forward. We don't glide. And if you put your hand in the water and push it forward, you're slowing yourself down. You're going to put your arm forward. You're going to feel your arms come up, and as you as you extend your out you're going to take your wrist you're going to have your wrist bent like this and your fingertips will tip tip the water when the fingertips in the water you push them in and you immediately start your your pull you're not going to glide you're not going to leave it out there if you leave it out there and glide you're slowing down we don't want to slow down we want to beat the swim cut off and how we're going to beat the swim cut off is with good swim stroke then when you're coming through the water as you put your fingers in, you're going to make a giant question mark with making your arm into three paddles. And let me put up a, bring up a, there we go. You're going to bring your arm with three paddles. And I don't know, I don't think you can see me here, but your, your upper arm is one paddle. 
Your lower arm, your forearm is another paddle. And your hand is a third paddle. You're going to want your arm in this position as it goes through the water. You do not, you do not want your arm in this position. And what I see a lot of people do is they, they make this beautiful stroke out of the water, their hand goes in the water, and then they dip their arm down and they pull it through and don't grab any water, don't pull any water. What you want to do is this is a mindset. You want to think, grab the water and push my body through the water. You want to push your body through the water. You do not want to pull your arm through the water because as soon as you start to pull your arm through the water, thought pattern now, you because you actually are still pulling your arm, the thought pattern is you want to pull push your body forward by catching as much water with your, with your upper arm, your lower arm, and your hand as you can and push it as far forward with each stroke as you possibly can. You want to pull your stroke all the way down until your thumb hits your thigh at the farthest back point before you pull it out and start your next stroke. <coughs> That's the fundamentals of a good, solid stroke. If you want more information on that, uh, I, do video, um, I do video swim coaching. Uh, you can sign up for video swim coaching, and I can help you with that. Uh, I'm also a... a Coach, I do uh, jscoachingsystems.com is my company. Uh, I can help you with all different types of coaching that you might need. So, uh, so that's the basics of your swim stroke. If you have your swim stroke right, no matter if you're a short person, tall person, round person, thin person, Swim is all about technique. It's not about how strong or, or how how in shape or how great you are. Some of the best uh, triathletes out there are, are, are just learning how to swim and they're finding out that they were the, the, the thought pattern with a bike ride and with a uh, run is to put down as much power as you possibly can and and go as fast as you can turn over rotation uh, turnover on your feet when you're when you're cycling the cadence turn over your feet when you're running well if you just think about turnover with your arms you're not going anywhere because your body's going to your mind is going to search for the the path of least resistance to get your arm through the water if you find the path of least resistance to get your arm through the water you're not going to go fast you want to find get your arm to Gather as much water as it can, and you want to feel that water. You ever talk, think of the swimmers talk about having a feel for water? If you can feel the water on your wrist, you know you're swimming right because that's the area that the water will, will break off of the most. Hand position, uh, not this old cup thing. You want to have it open a little bit. I'm going to give you a tip right now. I don't give this tip very often, but the way you find your hand position is you put the window down in the car, you put your arm out the window, and you if you take and you cup your hand like this with your arm out the window with a car, you're going to find out that it doesn't push back very hard. That's because the air gets in here and rolls around, and so does the water. It rolls around in here, and then the rest of the air goes or the water goes right around it. So you want to open your fingers and open your hand and you want to work it until you find the spot where the wind pushes back the hardest. That's what's going to push you back the hardest on the swim. If you guys have any questions, be, feel free to just throw them in the chat. <coughs> now, when it comes to uh, open water swimming and rough water and swim technique, you're going to take and shorten your stroke and pick up your cadence. I did just tell you that you don't want to pick up your cadence. You don't want to shorten your stroke. You want to get way out. That's that's what you want to do in, in nice, smooth conditions. But when you get rough water conditions, you're going to want to shorten your stroke so that you so that you can get that in, in your hand into the water and get that water moving forward. And you want to pick up your rotation just a little bit. Uh, this way, um, you can beat that that rolling rough water. Okay, if you're getting value from this, uh, go down. Make sure you give me a thumbs up in the in the description down below. Uh, right there, you see to become a supporter, you can go to Patreon.com, Coach John, and you also, hey, I just got my new uh, YouTube handle. It's www.youtube.com backslash or forward slash at Coach John. If you want to get to my to my uh, YouTube site, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped over there and uh, and subscribe for uh, a whole lot of, of great information. 
All right, now we're going to talk about actually the swim tactics. Uh, this is another area where people have a lot of problems with the swim is uh, at the start. You know, you, you get on the beach uh, or you get on the dock, whichever one you're doing, and here are all these people between hundreds and hundreds of people to thousands and thousands of people all going to be getting in the water. And you look around and you say, holy cow, I am going to be in a washing machine with people beating me like I'm a, like I'm in the WWE. Uh, but that doesn't have to happen. So uh, there's, there's four different type, types of, uh, there's four, th four different things I want to talk to you about uh, on the swim starts. There's, there's a couple of different styles of swim starts. And the first one is a mass swim start. We don't see this very much anymore. It's what they used to do at Kona, where they put all the athletes in the water at one time and fired a cannon and everybody went. Well, the problem with that one is you have, you are putting 2,500 people in the water. And of those 2,500, 1,500 of them swam at the exact same pace. So you had this giant scrum of swimmers beating on each other. And this is where this, you know, Ironman swims are horrible and rotten and nasty. And they're, you're, you're beating on each other. And it's, and it's, and this is where the next style came in. And that's called a wave start. And what a wave start is, is where you're going to start with, uh, if it's a smaller triathlon, we've, I've done some where it's just all the men go and then all the women go. And then even bigger ones, bigger triathlons than that will have all of the groups go out by uh, age groups. So that when you start, you may be starting um, two minutes behind the 25 to 25 to 29 year old women. Uh, you're going to be the 30 to 34 year old men. You'll be starting behind them two minutes behind. And what happens there is it just spreads the, the scrum out. Uh, the slower swimmers, by the time that you start to catch, if you're a faster swimmer, by the time you start to catch the back of the pack in front of you, they've already thinned down into a single file line or a multi-file line, and you can get around them without a whole lot of problems. That, to be honest with you, is my personal favorite type of start is the, uh, is the wave start. And then what's come into vogue here in the last uh, five, eight years is the self-seated start. Why I say I like the wave start over the self-seated start is because I found with the self-seated start that when you get in the water, you are literally swimming with the people who are the exact same pace as you. There's no way to get away from them. You're not going to be able to swim away from somebody because they're going to swim your, your pace. If they're dropping people in the water, four of them every five seconds, uh, you're going to be with those people the whole time. And if you're not positioned right, you can get into that little scrum uh, situation. Or if you have a situation where you swim straight and you take a first, say, a left-hand turn, and then you have to make a right-hand turn, that bunches everybody up into, into a swim scrum <coughs> and could be an issue. But that's uh, we're going we're gonna to learn how to avoid that totally and completely. And then there's two different starting points. You have a beach start and you have a dock start uh, most of the time with a dock starts you're going to find that those are going to be um self-seated starts uh those are those are the only way you can really do a dock start the beach start is where you're going to find the the either the mass start or the or the uh, or the uh wave starts all right so Here's how we're going to beat the swim anxiety at the swim start. First, if there's any way, shape, or form that you can get a swim warm up in, do it. What I'm going to say is, I want you want to get to the venue. You want to be one of the first people parking your car in the venue at the in the morning. You want to get down to swim start. You don't want to try to get that extra half hour sleep because that's going to cause everything to be packed into a little a half hour or less time. So what you want to do is you want to time yourself. So you're going to be one of the first people into transition area. You're going to set up your transition nice and easy and slow. You're going to have everything set up and ready to go. You're going to put on your wetsuit. You're going to head down to swim start and you're going to get in a good 10, 15 minute uh, warm up. You're going to get those, those water into your, your wetsuit. That's going to take that initial shock will be gone. You aren't going to have that when the race starts. 
you're going to know how the wetsuit feels when you swim. Some people's wetsuits are tight. Um, you want to make sure that you try on several different wetsuits before you find the right one. That Sumer Po one that I had a minute ago, I am going to have a full review on that one uh, coming out in about a month. Um, that has like five to eight hundred percent stretch. I wore it, and I can be honest with you, I've never felt a wetsuit that I've never felt like I had a wetsuit on before. That one is really, really great. Um, but you want to get that wetsuit on. You want to you. To get the wetsuit on, you, the, some of the anxieties people have about wetsuits is getting them on and getting them off. You want to use a product called TriSlide. Uh, you want to you want to spray your legs and your arms down really, really, really well with the TriSlide, and this will allow the wetsuit to slide right on. Uh, the Sumer Po, again, is another wetsuit. Uh, one of their advantages is they put a slippery uh, surface on the inside of the wetsuit to get it on and off easy. Um, but you want to go ahead and make sure you use something. I don't like the body glide because the body glide, you can't get it everywhere. The, the spray style, it really will get a good solid spray. Do you feel slippery later? No, you don't. You don't feel slippery at all later. Uh, get the wetsuit on, stretch it, stretch your shoulders, stretch your arms up, stretch your legs out, do a couple of squats, get that wetsuit all nice and, and in position and go out there and do like a 10 to 15 minute warm up swim. If you can't get a warm-up swim in, I want you to get your wetsuit on and about 10 minutes before the start of the race, I want you to take a ice cold or as cold as you can get bottle of water, okay? And I want you to take and pull your wetsuit out and I want you to pour your bottle of water down inside your wetsuit, front and back, cold water, let it seep down in there. It's gonna feel horrible. But what's going to happen is it's going to do that heart rate spike is going to happen then 10 minutes before the race. And as the water is inside the wetsuit, your body is going to warm that water up. It's going to allow your heart rate to come back down. And when you jump in the cold water of the lake or the, or the, the Gulf or the ocean, uh, you're not going to get that initial shock because you already have the warm water in place and off you go. A lot less swim anxiety that way. All right. So if you, and the other thing is too, is if you're on a, uh, if you can't get the warm up in, do arm swings, do leg swings, uh, go down, do a few push ups, get the body going, get your heart rate up a little bit. You want to make sure you get your heart rate up a little bit before you get in the water, no matter what. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Now we're going to talk about um, how to start the swim. And not end up in that scrum, not end up in that mess. Um, and what you're going to do is, as you're as you're coming up, uh, I'm going to tell you um, my last big race I did was uh, Ironman Blue Ridge. It was a dock start, four wide dock start. Uh, I've done multiple uh, single end of the dock jump offs. I've done uh, beach starts three wide. I've done beach starts four wide. The last time I was at Ironman. Florida 70.3, which is what our, our goal is, is it was a three-person wide uh, beach start. Ironman Florida in Panama City Beach, four wide beach start. And what you want to do as you're heading out onto one of these uh, starts is you want to look at where the buoys are, okay, and where you're going to line up uh, in the line for entering the water. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to end up this green guy on the inside, the inside cap. You want to work yourself to the outside. If your buoy is, is going to say it's a right-hand turn, you your first buoy, you're going to work your way all or the way to the left, to the outside. If it's a beach start or wave start, you're going to work yourself as far to the left as you possibly can go. Yes, I understand. It's a little bit longer to swim, but I'm going to tell you right now, you are going to swim it faster you're not going to have someone setting your pace for you. And you could probably find some feet to get onto and draft out there of someone else who's doing this. And you're going to actually pass these other people as they're fighting in the scrum on the inside. Because what's going to happen is, let's just say they're going to go four wide off the beach or uh, off a dock. As you go four wide, you're going to jump in the water or you're going to run into the water. 
And you're going to see that the that these people, along with the four in front of them, the four in front of them, the four in front of them, are going to funnel <clears throat> down into the first turn. And when they funnel down into the first turn, you're going to have a scrum of people at that first turn. There's no doubt about it. No matter how far that first turn is away, there's going to be people pushing, shoving, trying to get around that buoy. You can swim to the inside of the, and in most races, make sure you pay attention to the rules. In most races, you can swim to the inside of the lane markers, but you can't swim to the inside of the turn buoys. You have to go around the turn buoys. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up all the way on the outside. We're going to jump in the water and we're going to set our pace a slightly lower than what you're wanting to swim the race at. Why do I say that? Because even if you feel like you're going to swim slightly slower than the pace you're going to set, swim at, the adrenaline's going to be high, your heart rate's going to be coming up, your body's going to want to go, and you're probably, even though you feel like you're going to be swimming at a slower pace, you're going to actually be swimming at a higher pace than what you're going to end up swimming for the rest of the race. So you're going to swim, and what you're going to do is you're going to watch to the, to the inside of you and you're going to make sure you stay to the outside of all the swimmers. Now, if you swim with, uh, which I do, which I swim with my uh, breath to the left, I'm actually spotting the swimmers ahead of me and trying to stay just to the outside of swimmers that are maybe 100 yards ahead of me. Um, or I'll take a swim, I'll take a stroke to the right every once in a while, make sure that I'm not drifting off the course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spot something in the distance. Um, when you're on the dock or on the beach and you look down at that first buoy, something out in the distance, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Florida swimmers, the guys who are going to be doing Ironman Florida, there's nothing out there. If you're going to look south and see, you're going to have to white, see Cuba before you're going to, before you're going to see anything. But <coughs> There may be a boat out there. There may be a there might be a there might be a safety boat anchored out there or or just parked out there. But find something that's a little bit bigger in the distance, a tree, a house, something that you're gonna spot instead of trying to spot that buoy. Because what's gonna happen is there's gonna be splashing, there's gonna be arms going everywhere, there's you're gonna be down, you're gonna be down in the water lower than you think, and you're not gonna be able to see that buoy real well, but you might be able to see that palm tree or that giant oak tree, or that tower, or uh, something in the distance that you can spot uh, where you can stay at, a, at a, a certain distance. You know, you can, you can make a straight line to the buoy. I can tell you in Ironman Florida, you're going to have a dock down the center uh, almost all the way out where you can actually, if you're swimming with a right hand, where you're swimming with a right hand breath, you can just make sure you stay that certain distance away from that dock. Really, really easy to get down to the end. Now, we're going to do that, and we're going to swing this first buoy. Now, we're, as I say, we're going to spot the big item. You're going to swim down. You're going to swim that first buoy. You're going to swing it a little bit to the outside. You're not going to get right in tight on the buoy because that's where that swim scrum is going to be. That's where that big problem is going to be. You're going to be swimming with, like I say, hundreds to thousands of people, and it's going to get really tight right up against that buoy. So what you're going to do is on that first buoy, you're going to try to swim a little bit to the outside of the buoy. Yes, like I say, it's going to be longer. But if you have to stop and you have to wait and you have to move and you have to jostle and you have to fight your way around the corner to try to get into the line going down to the next buoy, you're going to be going slower than if you swing to the outside and swim around all those people. So that's how we're going to get around the outside end. This is going to help you, number one, and your anxiety, you're not going to be in the scrum. Number two, it's going to help you beat that cutoff time because you're going to be going faster out here than they're going to be going in here. Now, again, when you make that corner, find something big, a house, a tree, something in the distance to spot off of, uh, spot that to the next buoy. Now, by the time you get to the next buoy, you might have a situation where everything is narrowed down. There's not a lot of people that everything is kind of spread out and there's one or two or three lines of people through there you can you can cut it in a little bit tighter and then you're going to pick the finish line uh as a spot you might uh you might have to spot a, a tree or a building at first if you're way out and you're going to come in and you're going to spot something that's uh about halfway in you're going to get about a couple hundred yards offshore you'll be able to see the finish line arch 
Now, uh, that's a good way to get in there and find your way in and uh, not have the anxiety and it help you to beat the swim cutoff. Now, I want to talk to you guys about a rescue stroke. And what I mean by a rescue stroke, there's two things that could possibly happen if you're out there in the swim uh, and you need to you need to be able to stop and rest. Now, you're going to have some kayakers, you're going to have some jet skis, you're going to have some boats out in the water. You are allowed to go over to those and you are allowed to hang off of them and rest. All right? You're not allowed to make significant forward motion. They're not allowed to start paddling you down the down the swim course because if they do that, you'll be disqualified. But if you're just hanging on those on the the uh, the paddle boards or the kayaks, you're going to be fine. Take a, a second, get a little rest. Don't take too long. Let your heart rate come down and move on. You might go from paddle board to paddle board to paddle board, but you're going to make it. And you're going to keep on keep on pushing forward all the time. Just think, always have a little bit of forward motion. As long as you have forward motion going, you're in the race. <coughs> as far as a, a, a uh, rescue stroke goes, my rescue stroke is breaststroke. And I've had to use it before. I'm a, I'm a uh, strong swimmer. Uh, I've been swimming since I was four years old. And I am definitely a lot older than four. But... Uh, my rescue stroke is the breaststroke, and I suggest the breaststroke as a rescue stroke, not the backstroke. People want to roll over on their back, and then they just have no idea where they're going. They're doing this backstroke thing, and they're turned sideways. They're going across the course. They're getting in other swimmer's ways. This is when you end up getting punched in the stomach or in the side or getting your goggles knocked off. Uh, what you want to do is you want to practice it, though. If you're going to do the, the, the breaststroke or the side stroke or the two that I would suggest you would do, for a rescue stroke, go in the pool. When you're doing your, your swim warm-ups, swim 100 breaststroke. Get it to where you're used to seeing that breaststroke and moving forward on the breaststroke, knowing that, hey, I'm getting a better breath. You can swim a breaststroke two different ways. You can swim it lifeguard style. And what lifeguard style is, is you're going to have your head up out of the water totally as you're breaststroking. The water will be no higher than here. You'll be able to... Um, You'll be able to breathe with no problems, or you can do a regular breaststroke, but you get a good, you, when you when your head comes up, you'll get a good solid breath. You'll be able to sight, you'll be able to see what's going on around you. Make sure you have a rescue stroke and you're very, very comfortable with it. Guess what? When that swim anxiety comes in, you go to that rescue stroke, all of a sudden you're like, hey, I'm moving forward. I'm making progress. This is, this is getting easy, and when you feel comfortable again and you look around your surroundings or where you feel comfortable, you can go back into your, your front crawl and move on forward. You may have to switch to the breaststroke and back and forth. That's all right. Nobody says you can't do that. That'll help you um, along the way. So that's it, guys. That's what I have for you uh, as far as uh, – the swim anxiety goes. If you have any questions, throw them in the in the comments right now. I'd really appreciate it if you uh, that you came on board tonight. Um, and if I don't see any questions pop up, I am gonna gonna call this thing a night. And appreciate each and every one of you that came on board and watched me all the way through. Hey, this is Coach John. Boom, I'm out.